A while back, I made a uh, DIY video showing how to make a simple but very, very strong e-bike receiver hitch rack carrier for under 135 bucks. That was back then, about a couple years ago. Uh, it carries well over 200 pounds per rack, and unlike some of the motorcycle racks out there that people use for their e-bikes, it doesn't rely on uh, multiple motorcycle tie-down straps to hold the e-bikes in place. So, I thought I'd uh, make an updated version of that video. Basically, everything's the same on the build, except now you can build this, this uh, super rack for under about 190 bucks with all the parts. Now this video will uh, show you all the parts needed to build this great rack and how to build it. Uh, there's a complete parts list, including where to get everything you need in the video description below. First, use your e-bike to measure and mark the length of the tire tray, or you can just use a standard measurement of 72 inches. You can cut the length now or wait, as I did, and cut it a little later, and I'll show you in the uh, build process. Now, I found it to be much easier to build the e-bike rack in place on the back of your vehicle. It seemed like it was a good uh, work area. Now, this is showing the install of the anti-wobble device. Now, this isn't required. Uh, it's not required for part of the build, but it's highly recommended, and it really works well. It keeps the bike rack steady and stable so it won't rock back and forth when you are carrying the e-bike. Now, if you haven't cut the tire tray to length yet, now's the time to cut the tire tray to the pre-measured length. Now it's time to mount and install the tire tray onto the hitch step. Measure the center of the tray and line it up with the center of the hitch step. Now, make sure that the tray is flush with the outside edge of the hitch step. Drill two 3 8 inch holes in the center of the tray and approximately two inches from the end of the hitch step. Um, the measurements don't have to be really exact, just toward the outer edge of the step. To attach the tray to the step, use two inch by 3 8 inch bolts with flat washers on each side and a nylock locking nut. Now you can drill the holes for the end of the track bolts. Drill them about one inch from the end and in the center of the tire tray web. These bolts don't have to be exact as uh, they're not as critical. Now you use four and a half inch by three eighths inch bolts with of course a nylock nut, self-locking nut. You can use flat washers on the outside, but it's not necessary. I personally didn't use the flat washers. Just a little note here, don't over tighten the nuts because they can bend the web inward. Just snug up the nuts, you know, really good. Now it's time to cut the inch and a half perforated square tubing to lengths. And the lengths are 36 inches, 24 inches, and 12 inches. Then install and use the plastic end cap inserts. Make sure you install the four inch by three eighths inch bolt with a inch and a half fender washer uh, in the second hole before you attach the square tubing to the hitch step. Now mark the center of the hitch step and the square tubing, then align them. Make sure you leave at least a one inch space between the tire tray and the square tubing. 
Uh, you can have a space up to two inches. Then drill two 3 8 inch holes through the hitch step, approximately two inches from the outside edge of the hitch step. Uh, use the pre-drilled pre holes uh, in the square tubing as guides. Attach the square tubing with 3 inch by 3 8 inch bolts using a flat washer on each side and a nylock knock locking nut. Attach the 24 inch square tubing piece with a couple of 3 inch by 3 8 inch bolts using a flat washer on each side and uh, nylock locking nuts. Now attach the 36 inch length of square tubing. We'll call this the pivot arm. Use the pre-installed 4 inch by 3 8 bolt. Uh, make sure to use uh, an inch and a half fender washer between all the pieces of the square tubing and under the nylock locking nut. Uh, use the second hole from the end. Now when tightening the nylock nut and bolts, don't over tighten them. Snug them up good so the arm will pivot but stay in an upright position held uh, in place by friction. It should take uh, a little bit of effort to pivot the arm but you don't want to crank it down tight. Now use this same procedure to attach the 12 inch piece of square tubing using the second hole from the end, we use the second hole on almost all of them, on both pieces of the square tubing. Now install the rubber grabber mount using a 2 inch by 5 16 inch bolt and nylock locking nut in the second hole from the end. Now make sure you use the inch and a half fender washers between the rubber grabber mount and the square tube and on the back side of the nylock nut. Now again, only tighten this to the point of being snug so it'll allow the rubber grabber mount to rotate with a little effort. Now, depending on how your e-bike sits in or on this rack, you may have to change the, the grabber mount bolt to be on the right or left side of the 36 inch uh, pivot arm square tubing. Uh, I would start on the left side as shown in the video here but you'll just have to adjust it how it works best for your bike. The rack is now complete and it's time to mount your e-bike on the rack and kind of do the adjustments. Raise the pivot arm and the 12 inch arm to up to fit your bike. You kind of just have to play with that a little bit. The rubber grabber mount can be used on the top tube of your bike or if you have a step through model, then it can be connected to your seat post. You'll have to just adjust the mount as needed for your individual e-bike. Now I use one inch by two foot ratchet straps to secure the wheels and tires to the tray. And I use a one inch by two foot cam strap for added protection where the rubber grabber mount attaches to the e-bike either on the seat post or the top tube. Now again, this will all be in the uh, parts list at, in the description. Now depending on your vehicle, if the rack is too close to your vehicle, you can add a hitch extension as needed for extra distance between uh, the bike and your vehicle. For safety and for protection, I recommend you always use a three-point uh, tie-down system. Strap both wheels and tires to the tray and the top tube seat to the post. Now what's really great about this rack is you can add a whole other rack to it or even a trailer hitch and have your bike and then a trailer hitch on behind it. Then, you know, you can drive away feeling confident with how you're transporting your e-bike. Now just a note, I've been using this DIY type of rack to haul my bikes, all types of bikes, for over 20 years. 
I mean, it's super strong, stronger than, than almost all of the factory racks out there uh, that are on the market, and it's much simpler to use. Now, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles, but it does everything you need to do, and it does it very, very well. And probably the best thing of all is it doesn't take all those straps like a motorcycle rack does, and you can build it for under 190 bucks. And go ahead and check out the parts list in the video description below. It gives you everything you need and where to get it.